I just finished Firewatch. When did you finish it? I, I just finished it like last night. Mm -hmm. the, it's definitely an example of the journey being a lot better than the end, right? Because I, I, in talking to you earlier, it is true that the the end can be a bit underwhelming compared mm -hmm. to the rest without spoiling anything. Yeah. Um, and part of that is is just because the the beginning and middle and near end of the game has a good entertaining pulp kind of flavor to it. It's like a mystery that's slowly building up. The dialogue's yeah. real snarky. Yeah, it gets pretty it's sort of suspenseful. It's like a suspense thriller at a certain point. Mm -hmm. And I think it was on purpose, like actively trying to be like a mystery or something. Because, you know, you walk around and you find all these mystery books. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed. Did you notice that? Like yeah. all the books. Mm -hmm. um, and in each of these caches, there would be like a little mystery book and they're all like detective stories and things. So it's like they're clearly trying to get you into, or, or they're truly, they're clearly actively trying to connect mm -hmm. to those types of stories. Um, what did you think of like the actual gameplay on your end? Um, I, well, I thought the gameplay being relatively simple because it's um, it's just a it's just a series of like a little clearings that you're exploring through clearings in a forest that you're like navigating via this map. Um, and that and that you're most of the time not even like yeah I mean you're you're always alone you get to talk to someone over the radio but you always kind of feel alone and peaceful and I thought it was a really enjoyable experience in terms of just like the simple gameplay loop of just figuring out where you are and like you know it, it, the, I thought the nature was surprisingly realistic looking mm -hmm. um, that was part of it I um, wonder if they contacted actual forest reserve people mm -hmm. to maybe get a sense of like what they deal with on because it did it had just the right amount of monotony mm -hmm. i felt like you know day to day because you, you're jumping between days yeah. it starts off day one then it jumps to day two and then it jumps to like day seven and then it jumps to like day 30 or something mm -hmm. um and so they they give you this idea that you're kind of doing fairly menial tasks yeah. um but they give you enough of a taste of those menial tasks so that you really feel it you know, like you're just sort of, you you have a lot of time and a lot of space mm -hmm. to wander through. Yeah, you feel like you belong there and you end up developing a kind of affinity for the land. Like as if it's like you, it's your home for the summer in, in, in which the game takes place. It's like your temporary like refuge. Mm -hmm. And that adds, I think, to the impact of the story when that refuge gets kind of invaded by someone else. Um, yeah, and that that happens fairly early. It, mm -hmm. I mean, relatively early, right? Mm -hmm. Like you you do a few things. Actually, I think it's your first job, right? You have to go and deal with those two girls at the beginning of the game mm -hmm. who are like causing a ruckus somewhere in the forest. Right. And then on the way back, you get knocked out, or not knocked out. Sorry, you on the way back, you see this mysterious figure. Yeah. Who's like standing over you? Right? Yeah, you see them look at you. They point a flashlight at you. Yeah, yeah. They blind you for a second. Mm -hmm. And so that's like very early on this big mystery going on. And, he, and he's the main, your protagonist that you're playing gets sort of flustered. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I, lo I love that interaction because he gets flustered and then Delilah, the other person uh, from the other watchtower, says, you know, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. This place is outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that, that was actually one of the notably good jokes. Yeah. Um, and there's quite a few jokes. Uh, we could talk about the dialogue a bit, right? Mm -hmm. So... That the game almost, it, it just is almost like a radio play. It is dialogue, mm -hmm. the majority of the time, because because for good reason the the environments are so sparse, mm -hmm. they're fairly empty, which adds to the atmosphere, I think, right? Mm -hmm. But in the in in filling that in, because instead of filling it in with things to find, um, the developers actively seem to have filled it in with a lot of dialogue. Yeah. Um, and some of it's better than others. You know, you just brought up a pretty funny joke mm -hmm. that pops up. Uh, I thought it was it was pretty consistent throughout, and there definitely is a is an emphasis on character from the beginning. Like the the game starts off with just text. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a cool choice because of how important just like your background as a character is. They just they just gave you a sense of who your character was right off the bat, so that they wouldn't have to dump it on you later in some unnatural way. Yeah, I actually mm -hmm. found that that was very surprising to me. Uh, mm -hmm. let, let's talk about the beginning a little bit because mm -hmm. when that first started the little dialogue thing. They don't tell you that you can click on the text. Mm -hmm. 
because mm-hmm. they just give you this first line and it, and it just says like you are something like yeah. you're seeing a girl or something mm-hmm. and the text is just sitting there and it's purple and you have to figure out to click it and um i sort of sat there for a little <laughs> while just staring at the text on the screen mm-hmm. i didn't realize that i'm supposed to actually interact with it and then once i do it it felt like one of those uh you know those anime not like video game novels Oh yeah, the vi- yeah. What are they called? The visual novels. I visual novels, I guess. The, yeah, there's a probably a specific name for it but that we. I think the listeners understand what we're talking about, right? Yeah. It's just those those picture novels with words and like multiple choice, and you kind of get to choose your path. The beginning of this game is like that essentially. Mm-hmm. It gives you. It says except that even even less visual. It's really just a like a blank screen. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, text. it's just words, mm-hmm. and maybe some music. Right, but yeah. actually, what I thought they did really well. So it has words, and and you're making choices. But in between all those choices, and these choices are like big life events in terms of the protagonist's relationship with his wife, mm-hmm. right? But in between those moments, the game would jump into your plane as him, and you're just walking through the forest. Yeah, and there's nothing happening. It's just him walking around, and I thought that was a really uh, poignant way of div- having giving you a sense of time. Mm-hmm. Right, because it's it's almost as if, and this is an assumption. I don't know, but it is almost as if the idea is is that your your show your character is walking through the forest, and it's like he's reminiscing these things. Right. So it's like in between him just sort of wandering and just thinking to himself. You're re- reminiscing, and then you're kind of choosing what he's reminiscing. Yeah, he's right? he's leaving the big city. He's walking into this forest that he's going to spend a lot of time in. Suddenly, he has a lot of time to think about everything that he's kind of walking away from. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a dark story. Yeah. Um, his wife has dementia, which which is not something... I don't, there's not many games that deal with that. Yeah. And in a way, this game doesn't deal with it because it's, it's at the very beginning and it's mm-hmm. kind of... You know, it's just the background. But it, it's, really, it's a really a powerful start, I think, just because... As, as much as uh, as much as this is only a section at the beginning, I think that the beginning part is actually in itself kind of a really fascinating story mm-hmm. um and i think it's like it's they give it its due like it's just it's just not it's not overridden but it's not underwritten either like there's a good story there from the start about meeting this woman and then falling in love with her and then developing a life with her and then realizing yeah that she that she's falling apart and they do not oversell it mm-hmm. right because it i don't remember it being uh too long-winded or too sappy yeah. Like I don't, there, I don't think there was a moment where this grand piano like pops <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, the like, music didn't swell. Or yeah, anything. all these violins didn't suddenly appear, and mm-hmm. uh, and so it, I, I thought it was, it was a great, intriguing start. Mm-hmm. And like you said, they don't necessarily like expand on the whole dementia thing, like they potentially could have, but I don't think they were aiming for that because, like, like we said, um, it does seem like they want it to be more of a pulpy mystery story and in that regard i think they mostly accomplish it right uh throughout most of the game yeah it's 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 pretty entertaining yeah and and the dialogue is pithy mm-hmm. right everyone is super like capable of like being punny and funny and all those qualities yeah the characters complement each other the, the main character you you can choose here and there what, what he does but for the most part he's pretty dry like the voice mm-hmm. acting style um, and do you notice who that was it's the guy from Mad Men, the underutilized yeah. kind of husky guy from mm-hmm. Mad Men. Yes, the guy from Mad- Rich Summer, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's who? Yeah, totally underutilized, but really he captures your attention as soon as he's on screen. Uh, hmm. A pretty thick beard. Oh, have you always had a beard? For a while, yeah. All right. Perfect. Yeah, he captures your attention even more, and I think the voice acting, especially for him, mm-hmm. uh, was really good. Yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not totally. This is more of a general. It's not really a critique of this game. I'm not totally a fan of dialogue that's snarky. I generally don't like snarky dialogue, only because I guess I don't. I'm not a snarky person in life, mm-hmm. and so dialogue to me doesn't work like that. It's mm-hmm. not snarky in that way. Um, so it doesn't feel good to me when I'm reading something or watching something that's like that. Um, but that's not a knock on the game because even though that's not my preferred uh, storytelling method or style of characterization, 
I think in this game, it really lends a hand to the experience because, you know, it, it is a sparse environment and it's nice having these characters who um, have a bit of an attitude. And I think the voice actors know how to handle it, right? Like mm -hmm. if the voice actor sucked, the dialogue would have bombed really bad. Yeah, but the, yeah, they, they, um, they complement each other really well. You know, because the, cause the other woman, like, they, they, there's just a right amount of awkwardness, too. Like, they have weird exchanges where they, they, they're not quite on the same page. Yeah, and some jokes don't land. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. they'll comment on it. <laughs> so let's talk a bit more. We, we don't necessarily have to start spoiling anything yet. But let's talk a little bit more about, like, what develops. Because beyond this guy, this mysterious figure mm -hmm. that you see, um, there's there also starts being just strange... Uh, just moments in, in terms of the character at least and some of it i think is a bit of a red herring it's sort of like added uh characterization that doesn't necessarily amount to anything mm -hmm. um one example is the kind of tension that you have between the protagonist and delilah the his boss who he's talking to over the mic um they build up a lot of tension as if you know she's coming across kind of strong like she's really interested in him mm -hmm. and uh she you know like i maybe this is just me assuming a lot while i was playing but i started to feel as if she was she was getting uncomfortably um like she was jumping the gun a little bit in terms of like being attracted to him mm -hmm. and then you know she would make comments about she's drawing him and like she's watching him through her little tele her binoculars or something mm -hmm. and how she's uh she'll call him sweetie in the middle of a conversation or something there was a there was a degree of flirtatiousness that seemed to uh come from the like mass effect school of like well if if they're the if they're another person you can have sex with them like <laughs> yeah <laughs> if they're yeah if yeah. if they're there uh -huh. <laughs> you can dialogue your way to to absolute copulation yeah in the middle of a forest mm -hmm. um and and that and that didn't feel real to me so i assumed i i'm when i say real i said it didn't it didn't feel natural like a natural flirtation it didn't feel like something that was um that came out of an actual relationship it just sort of seemed like oh she's really just jumping into that yeah. you know and so i assumed that that was on purpose that they, that the developers were writing her in such a way that you would start to wonder about her Right. and about her intentions and, and maybe it was a little on purpose because they do have some dialogue options where you know when when the main character starts freaking out there's dialogue options that will say something like are you lying to me like are are you even real and like things like that right to sort of play up with the expectation that maybe something is up with her mm -hmm. um but as you and I both know, that isn't exactly where the story goes. Yeah, it doesn't exactly fulfill that, which which could be which could have been you know a message about his paranoia. Uh, but as we might mention, if we start spoiling some things, I mean, he uh, it doesn't really go in that direction either. He wasn't paranoid either. You know? Yeah, and and so then this goes back to what you said about the dementia thing and how it wasn't necessarily fleshed out because it wasn't fleshed out with his wife, mm -hmm. but it it just generally wasn't fleshed out at all because they, they bring up dementia and they bring up, they, they get that in your head of him experiencing someone who's losing her mind. Yeah. Right. And I feel like it's like, well, if you're going to bring up dementia, then dementia's going to play mm -hmm. <laughs> at some point. And they also, I don't know if you know this, they also bring up the sister and his attraction to the sister. That was weird. Yeah. Yeah. And that never comes up mm -hmm. again after yeah. the beginning. And it seems it seems like such an odd thing to bring up and not amount to anything. Because yeah. I started thinking, what if Delilah is the sister? That's what like, I thought too. <laughs> yeah, and and that was only because they they drop all of these little hints and things, mm -hmm. and they continue to do that. There's a point in the game where you find a, a like a an outpost where mm -hmm. scientists are doing all of these things, and there's like a fence around the area, and there's a million bigger explanations necessary for that thing. Mm -hmm. And the explanation you get is as bare bones and vague and, and removed and minimum as possible. Right? You, you get a loose connection with like the main guy who's, who's harassing you too, which is Ned, mm -hmm. the guy who's like overhearing your conversations and like planting all these problems. It, 
in in what I understand, when you find his little hideout, you find out that he was making these reports because he wanted to freak you guys out. That yeah. he had just found this little place, yeah, and he, then he started writing these reports, and and he started overhearing you guys because he. It, my understanding of his motivation, it was just because he didn't want them to mess with him because he his son had died and he didn't want anyone to find out about him. Mm -hmm. And so the main character and the girl Delilah were in the way. So he thought he would just freak them out. That was my understanding. And yeah. and I say it's my understanding because the, the game isn't too explicit. You kind of just have to read the little things inside of his... Um, yeah, I mean, I guess he started off trying to blackmail the main guy by by saying by making the uh the girls that he found out there believe that he had attacked them or something yeah that that is something that does come up that was the beginning of his scooby-doo plot then he goes into <laughs> like this whole this like vast conspiracy thing and 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 that explains the books that were left in the uh the caches these were his reading material he's really into these plots i guess right yeah, yeah. um so he he started to make one of his own um, but it, it's odd because that fence, the weirdest thing about that fence is that, and, and, and here's a weird thing about the, the false foreshadowing in this game in general and mm -hmm. the kind of red herrings is that, uh, like Delilah doesn't know that the fence is even there until you find it. Even though like I've, there are plenty of moments where I looked at the fence and then I looked to the side and I saw that her watchtower was like right in view of the fence. Like. I saw the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. No, I had that exact same moment where you look up mm -hmm. from, you just found this whole place and it was like this big revelation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, her watchtower has a perfect sight line yeah. with the whole thing. So clearly she would know. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're talking about how do they get all this equipment here? They must have had helicopters and things. And she's like totally oblivious. Yeah. But yeah, that was a bit of an oversight. In, really in really odd. Thing. It just seemed like either there's some huge secret that nobody knows about which i don't think is the case um or the game was kind of scrambled at the end like the the story was not quite fit together in the way that the writers intended or something yeah i i wonder how much of that because the amount of red herrings that there are mm -hmm. right like the sister thing and his wife being having dementia and him questioning his mind and like delilah mm -hmm. being a little weird and uh the thing that doesn't develop with the girls, right? Because remember, they were all worried because they had transcripts of them talking about like him, them being aware of the girls, and then Delilah doesn't report it. So then, like, mm -hmm. they're worried that they're going to be in all this trouble. And then it just sort of solves itself because the yeah. girls are found later, like having stolen a tractor. Yeah. And so they they have all these things that don't amount to anything. So I sort of wonder if if the ending was something that was put in late in the game. Yeah. Like they, they have maybe they they might have had a different idea of where it was gonna go, and then they changed their mind. Yeah, possibly due to budget constraints or time constraints or something, they couldn't quite. Maybe maybe they intended to have a bigger ending, like one that involved, you know, things kind of blowing up in your face. But at yeah. the end, it kind of was anticlimactic. Yeah, and so, and, and it's unfortunate. And some of that might be uh, to give them the benefit of the doubt a little bit, right? Some of it could have been on purpose a bit. If if they're trying to say that this Ned guy is reading a whole bunch of mystery, like pulpy mystery books, mm -hmm. then they're trying to say, oh, he's going to purposely be as contrived to these pulpy books. But it's still, it's sort of like, like those, those games that make fun of bad game design and mm -hmm. then use bad game design to make fun of bad game design. It's the same kind mm -hmm. of thing. It's like they're, they're having this guy be super contrived, but then in turn the developers end up creating a story that's kind of just super contrived yeah. in terms of at least how it ends. Um, and and that's that's too bad because the writing is super enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, the dialogue is is fresh. It's, it's fresh in regards to gaming. Like there's not a lot of games with dialogue like this game has. Mm -hmm. um, and I really appreciate the dialogue for that reason. At least I really appreciate that they hired the voice actors they did because mm -hmm. uh, I imagine that that cost a pretty penny. There is one last major aspect of the game, and and that's this, this little boy. Uh, right. What what's his name? Uh, his name was Brian. Brian Goodwin. Yeah, Brian Goodwin. Mm -hmm. And he's like this nerdy character who has all these little Dungeons and Dragons esque things. What was it like? 
something in wyverns it's like a yeah wizards and weaverns yeah wi- like wi- wi- wizards and wyverns yeah, or know, however you say that <laughs> <laughs> um and i and even that feels like something that didn't amount to that much i mean mm-hmm. they, they touch on the idea that oh the father wanted him to be like a rock i mean a rock climber of some sort and instead his kid is super nerdy so that might have been a motivation to kill the kid mm-hmm. but at the same time it felt like like they were starting to build up this character around this kid and then they just kind of stopped and you find the dead body and and the explanation is loose you don't know whether the dad killed the kid or whether it was an accident Mm -hmm. i personally think it was probably an accident yeah um because there's not you know innocent to proven guilty as Mm -hmm. they say at least maybe criminal negligence like yeah well obviously yeah (laughs) yeah clearly (laughs) So, probably so, put his kid in risk or, yeah put it put his kid in a pretty big chasm right? yeah um and so i guess there, there's a lot of things to be disappointed about to a certain extent and some of that disappointment i think a big amount of the disappointment is expectation yeah. attached and it, they do build that expectation so it's not like totally they build removed it a from lot them. they build it they build it like book of eli builds the idea that he's not <laughs> that he's yeah. not blind at all in any <laughs> and way and then he's blind yeah <laughs> No, it's it's definitely like they <laughs> they're going in one direction and they really get you to go with them. Mm-hmm. You're on you're I was on it, right? I was like, "Okay, I'm into this. This is going to be awesome. This is going to end in a crazy way." Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of ends. And that's fine. I'm not I mean, they could have driven that home if they had if they had You know what I really wonder about is why didn't the game end with another text option? Mm. Like another you know, with some light music and a blank screen, just more text, like at the end. Yeah, I think that could have really rounded it out really well. Yeah, return to the idea of him having to make decisions about his his life. Mm-hmm. Right, he had this little escape which you experienced, which yeah. was him in the forest, mm-hmm. and then it's just sort of what does he take away from it, and what does he appreciate? Yeah, that would have been that would have been really cool. Yeah, because then it would have driven home that it's still up to your interpretation, even at the very end. Yeah, you know. And they had a perfect opportunity for that too because it ends with him talking to Delilah and he makes a few choices in terms of like telling her what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. But that could have been a much longer trend, um, a much longer experience and could have really delved into like, well, where is he now? Like what what is going to happen? And giving you that choice, I think it would have connected to the character even more. Yeah. Um. Let, let's, sum, let's sum up our, our thoughts on this game so what do you think of the overall game overall i couldn't stop playing it because like the story is as pulpy as it is like it really kept me kept me going like i just didn't know when to stop it didn't feel like there was any point where i didn't want to know exactly what was going to happen next um and the characters i thought were pretty charming um snark aside i, I thought that I thought they were pretty you know uh fleshed out um mm-hmm. So I, I think overall, overall the writing quality is really good in this game. The ending may have been disappointing, but the experience and the journey itself was was well worth it. Yeah, and and I don't think you know to summarize my own. Uh, I think if you go into this game and you put your expectations on the level of like a Stephen King story or like a Dean Koontz type, like <laughs> light mystery, you mm. know. Um, a bit pulpy it's not it's not aiming to be like art right it's not like a super artistic riveting uh like overturn your morals type of experience something where you're gonna play it you're gonna get into it you're gonna have a lot of fun um it's not too long you're you're gonna you know engage with these characters even if they aren't always uh fully fleshed out characters even if they aren't always 100 percent realistic in the traditional sense in terms of character but you're definitely going to feel like they're at least alive within their universe um and but but i think i think honestly it's super it's it's just an enjoyable it's a very entertaining enjoyable game and it doesn't aim too high and so if you if you maintain your expectations on sort of a a medium to high level um and like i said don't expect it to be artistic Mm -hmm. Uh, except it, it has beautiful art in it, but it's not. It's definitely not an art project. Yeah. I think you can come away really, really liking it, and it's memorable. I'm definitely gonna remember it. It, it has some of the some better storytelling than a lot of other games that strive to have good dialogue. 
and things, right? Yeah, I, th- I think I think uh, it definitely it, memorable is a good word for it. It doesn't really change gaming history, but it changes certainly. It's, it certainly sticks in my mind. Mm-hmm. It was a really special experience, a unique game, and I'm glad I played it. It'd be great if more games had dialogue that's fun. Mm-hmm. I think it's really fun. Yeah. Okay, so uh, those are our thoughts. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks. See ya.